Hey, what's up, guys? It's Pascal with the ALF Boss Show, and this is episode number three. And today we have an awesome show. Uh, we're going to cover Aka today, how to keep them out of your building and how to have fun with that. And uh, it's going to be a blast. Uh, we just got through Hurricane Doreen this week. I know everybody is tired and exhausted, but God, thank God we made it through. And um, I was going to have a guest on today. Uh, I was going to have uh, the governor on with me today. However, he's bu- he was busy with the hurricane this week, and we had to postpone that interview. Hopefully, we can uh, set it up in the future. And with further ado, let's get on with the show. Why do you think some facilities get in more trouble than others? So here's the answer to that question. I believe in three pieces to that. Um... Well, first, let me explain to you. The ones who get in a lot of trouble with Akka, those are the ones that start off with some issues, and then they don't correct the issues, and then more issues come, and Akka keeps showing up for revisits and this, and they find more stuff. And before you know it, you're on uh, Akka's radar, and they come harass you, and they keep finding more and more and more, and the snowball keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually uh, the last nail on the coffin goes in, and uh, sayonara, see you later. But... My answer to your question, I want to break it down to three pieces. Now, the first piece, I believe, is systems. Um, Facilities don't have good systems in place. Now, listen, we got a whole bunch of regulations to follow, a whole bunch of regulations. And you can't just keep them in your brain and you can't just do them on the fly and do them as things happen. You got to have systems in place um, to tackle these regulations. Um, if you don't have systems in place, there's consultants out there that can help you, uh, cheap plug right now, ALF boss, we have automation systems for you. Um, you can, but you can make your own systems, uh, go through the rule book and just write out the regs and then just say, okay, how are we going to be in compliance with this reg? Uh, make up a little, uh, tickler system. Or reminders just up on a calendar. Uh, okay, on this date, we're going to make sure our elopement drills are completed. On this date, we're going to make sure once a month, all the 1823s are completed. And it makes sense. And they don't have things on them they're not supposed to have on there. Make sure our medication stuff is in order. Checklist here, checklist there, checklists everywhere. But listen, it's not that hard. Just put it together and... Add, a, add it to a calendar so when it comes up, okay, today this is what we're doing. You shouldn't just show up to your facility and be like, okay, today let's see which way the wind blows. <sighs> no, it doesn't work like that. you got to have a plan. you got to have a system. And the ones who don't have the systems, those are the ones who fall into trouble. Aqua shows up one day and you're like, oh, darn it. I was going to do those one of these days. But they didn't get around to the staff files and now they're a disaster. Half the people won't have what they need. Okay, well, if you had a system in place that say, hey... Okay, this renew these on this day, renew this on that day, you know, to tell you, you know, um, your hurricane supply, let's go through it. Okay, it's on the, it's on the calendar. Today, we are going to look at our hurricane supply and make sure here's the list that we have these items ready. It's not that hard, people, but if you go into it with no systems, it's tough. And it's like you're going to get screwed and you're going to get in trouble and get some systems, get some systems. Okay, next part, the residents. Y'all keep bringing in these residents that you can't handle. That's the problem. Don't bring, don't take residents that you cannot take. I don't care if you have bills to pay and you need to take this resident because this resident has a gazillion dollars and it's going to help your problems. No, it's going to make more problems and that resident is not going to stay long anyways. And it's not going to be a good situation. If you can't handle a resident, uh... You can tell when you, you know, you got, that's another thing with your systems and evaluation system. Add that to your system. You need to be able to evaluate these people and know who you can and cannot take that should be in your systems. Let's go back to where we were. We are here. We are talking about residents. So, with your residents, if, don't go taking dementia residents if you're not capable of handling dementia residents. Don't go taking dementia residents if you have all independent residents, because that dementia resident is going to wander into their room, is going to touch their things, and one of your regular residents is going to clock them upside the head, and then, whoo, here we go, adverse incident, and whole nine yards, and it's not fun. Uh, fall risk residents, not worth it. Let them go to the nursing home or something. It's not worth it. You know, boom, 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 falling every other day. 
Report, 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 adverse report. Oh, until he breaks a hip or something. And then you've got bigger problems. Oh, look at you. You knew he had a fall history. He's already fell four times. Why have you done anything? Ooh, big red flag with Akka. You're in trouble. So listen, don't take those residents. Evaluate them carefully. Make sure you can take care of them. Save you a lot of headaches. I don't care if they want to pay you $6,000 a month. Don't do it. Don't, unless you're going to hire a personal aide 24 hours a day to be next to that resident with that money. Okay? That one's done. Last one, staffing. It's kind of like the residents. Don't just go hiring every Joe Blow, Joe Yo uh, that comes to the door. Um, I know there's emergency situations. I know people quit and you have to hire people like that. It happens. I know. Um, but you got to be more careful with who you're hiring. You got to make sure that these people are qualified. You got to make sure if you have an English population, they have to speak English. If you have like a Spanish all-speaking facility, I have nothing against that. It, it, that, that works. But when you have English-speaking residents and family members, it doesn't click. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good on you. Don't do it. Um, the most important thing, too, also is you can do reference check. Call where they came from before. Uh, same thing with the residents. You can call ALFs that used to be at before and, and say, hey, this staff person, you know, us ALF folks, we are usually pretty honest when we fire people or let go of staff. If you call us and say, how is Mary Sue? And Mary Sue was no good. And Mary Sue was stealing. And Mary Sue was not showing up on time. Mary Sue was bad. That person is going to tell you Mary Lou was bad. Trust me. Um, a trick, maybe. I know it, it doesn't make sense. Maybe to pay a little more to hire some extra staff. So it gives you leeway to get rid of the bad apples. But uh, observe your staff. Bad apples are easy to point out. If you have a troublemaker in the group, it spoils the whole rest of them. You have to make an example. Hit the road, Jack. You got to go. Because um, these people are continuously bad-mouthing the management and yourself behind your back to the other staff. And the morale of the staff goes through the tank. Uh, if you have staff like that, they're not hard to peep out. Tell them to kick rocks um, ASAP. Um, what else? Yeah, staff, residents, systems. Because uh, especially your staff and your residents, those are really important. Because if your staff like does something really bad, like when you're not there, and something bad happens to a resident, that's gonna be like a really serious ACA citation, and you're gonna be on that blacklist, and uh, that's not good. So uh, staffing really important. Um, residents also in those systems so one two three i think that answers question number two was that question two no 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 that's question one sorry moving too fast all right question number two this one's funny what is the best way to stay out of trouble with aka <laughs> listen it's really easy it's really easy i'm gonna show you a little i'm gonna show you the easiest trick right now you lock the door and you don't let them in Listen, you can't do that. Don't even, don't even go there. But you kind of can do that. And this is my answer. The less Akka comes into your building, the less chances are you have of getting in trouble with Akka. So if you, let's say you have a standard license. They're only supposed to come every two years for like a day or two, depending on the size of your facility. That's not that bad. Um, the less time they're in your facility, the... They can't find anything. Your chance goes down 100% when they're not in your facility. When they're at somewhere else's facility in their office, 100% chance you cannot get a violation. Isn't that pretty cool? So with that said, what can you do to keep them out besides locking the door? Because that's not right. It's, it's illegal. You're going to get in trouble. Don't do it. Okay. Who calls Aka? Residents? Uh, family members? And third parties? Let's take care of residents first. Okay. You need to get out of your little cubicles in your office uh, and go sit down or invite them into your office one by one. You need to talk to your residents. I know. Ooh, that sounds a little scary, right? You need to talk to them. You need to ask them. How's, you know, be sincere when you're talking to them. Don't be like with an attitude and like, how's everything? Everything good? What do you mean you don't like the food? This food is good. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be very nice, be very open, be very, be very real, and be yourself, and be 
a human being that cares about what they're saying. Uh, I know a lot of it can be a little bit agitating, because um, let's face it, every time they usually tell you the food sucks, this sucks, this sucks, it's the worst place, this is uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, but do your best. Talk to them. See if they have any concerns. See if you can address the concerns. And like seriously try to address the concerns. Don't just, if you blow them off, that's gonna, blow, that's gonna make it worse. Because the reason they call it because they figure nobody cares, and this is the only way to get back at you, and you are the rich person, the millionaire, who takes all their social security checks and flies around the world and all this stuff. This is what they have in their head, you know, while they're eating, you know, their crappy food that they claim, which is not crappy, by the way. It's very good. So that's really important. Talk to your residents, get a feel for what's going on, try to resolve their issues and make them feel better, feel like they're important, which they are, and that should help to bring down the complaints filed by the residents. Now with your family members, it's the same thing. You need to be in communication with them. Uh, if you come to your facility, reach out to them, go find them, say, hey, how's everything doing? Is everything okay? Is there anything you can do? Um, you know, you're in the business to please, the business to serve, and make sure that they are happy with the product that they are getting from your facility. Now with that said, I would also, because um, not all family members come to the facility, I would also make it a monthly thing, um, if not more often, but monthly is good, to at least reach out to them uh, by telephone. Uh, call them or schedule uh, you know, phone, interview, phone conversation, uh, same thing. Touch base with them, how are they doing? How's their loved one being treated? Is everything okay? Any complaints, any issues? If they do have issues, take care of them, call them back. I took care of it, this is what I did. Ladies and gentlemen, that goes a heck of a long way. Not only for family members not feeling like you don't care uh, and not calling Akka for their frustrations, it also goes a long way to prevent those lawsuits. Um, you, you know, make sure you document these conversations. So if it ever does go to court or, so, or, or a lawsuit gets filed, you pull out your notes, a resident member saying, you know, the resident saying everything is great and dandy, this place is like the best thing since sliced bread, family saying the same thing, they don't have any complaints, everything is great. They have a hard time making a case if that's the story. So, that's my solution to your problem. Keep Ock out of your building, but not by locking the door, by doing some of the suggestions I just suggest. Oh, I almost forgot an important one. There's no regulation against you making your own hotline number and plastering it all over your facility on the wall. You can make a little poster if you like, that if they have any complaints, concerns, or issues, they can call this number. Now, you can contract with third parties that will do this, that are neutral, or you can set up a line with a recording at the other end, and the you know, individuals, the resident, or whoever does call, um, you know, of course state this is the ABC facility hotline, blah, 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 and someone will get back to you and take care of your issue. Uh, that way you can kind of get ahead of the storm. You know, somebody calls and leaves a message regarding a concern that they have or a complaint regarding your facility. Uh, nicely, you can go and address it with the family or the resident. Um, that way that kind of gets around them calling the other numbers. Um, that's just a suggestion. There's nothing illegal about it. Just make sure you state that this is the facility hotline number. And that's a really cool trick that uh, has, I have seen work pretty well. So, that's it for the questions today. Uh, I do have one little thing. Um, this week, let's review our 1823s. Let's go through them. Let's make sure they're accurate. Let's make sure that they reflect the current condition of your resident. Make sure they're completely filled out. Make sure that the doctor has filled in all his places that he's supposed to because you know darn well they do not do it very well. And that's my tip of the week. Check those 1823s, and I'll see you next week with episode number four. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.